Good evening, everybody. It's your boy Joshy from the Hoots Podcast. Coming here to give you a review of NXT No Mercy. I was about to say TakeOver, but it kind of had that TakeOver feel, if you know what I mean, tonight. Um, blessed to come on here and uh, shoot the shit with you guys for a little bit. I want to get your guys' thoughts as you're watching this. If you do me a quick favor, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. As we're on the road to uh, 1,000 subscribers, we're very close to reaching that 500 uh, benchmark on YouTube. So if you could follow us on YouTube and subscribe to the channel, that would mean a lot to us. As you see on the screen, you can follow me on Twitter on X or Twitter, wherever you want to call it, at the Hoops Podcast. And um, I have the link to the transcript that I made for this particular premium live event on my Twitter page, and I'll share it here on the uh, description of this video as well. And for those who are watching, I just want to know, uh, what did you think about No Mercy? Um, I know this is going to be a very busy wrestling weekend for all of us, and I don't want to make next week's edition of the Who's Podcast be for three or four hours, so I am going to be doing these reviews uh, for tonight and then tomorrow with Wrestle Dream since I'm covering that event as well. And uh, I just wanted to say again, thank you for each and every single one of you for uh, supporting our work and supporting the podcast and everything. And um, this review is not going to be very long. I just want to come in here for about five, ten minutes, give you my thoughts on what I liked uh, from uh, No Mercy tonight. A uh, very fun event from Bankersfield, California. Um, I think it's time for a lot of people to... Give credit where credit's due to Shawn Michaels and the staff down there in NXT uh, for the overall brand that it is right now and just the vibe of these events. And I know that uh, we live in a society that's really uh, reliant on confirmation bias and, you know, one thing happens, that's just the narrative forever. Now more than ever, people just live off the whole perception is a reality thing. And I know there's been a lot of people that have had this, you know, oh, it's NXT 2.0, the purple splash colors of oh, Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard, blah, 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 blah. And they don't want to give any of these young talents a chance and a, the, or the brand a chance to grow and develop. As I've always said on the show over the years, the NXT black and gold idea and concept was never going to be sustainable with the overarching goal of what NXT was supposed to be in the first place. It's great. We had a fun run of NXT being a ripoff of Ring of Honor for many years. I enjoyed NXT Black and Gold just as much as each and every single one of you. But we can call a spade a spade here and know that concept was not going to be sustainable for long-term success. And um, tonight's the perfect att uh, attestment to that. All the complaints, all the, oh, it's not the same. Oh, NXT is ruined. I'm not going to give NXT a chance. Just watch the shows. Now, if you're not a fan of Booker T's commentary or Vic Joseph, uh, that's the joke. That's your prerogative. But I don't know how you don't watch a show like tonight from Bakersfield, California, and not say that NXT is still not a viable brand or entity in professional wrestling in 2023. Especially on the premium live events on its own accord. I mean, even if you don't even watch the weekly television shows, if you watched any of the premium live events this year from uh, Stand and Deliver, the Great American Bash, um, to what we saw tonight uh, at No Mercy, it's been top shelf wrestling and storyline development from NXT. Things that I wouldn't have in my bingo card for 2023 has come to fruition when it comes to NXT in 2023. For example, uh, Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin having a barn burner slugfest of an opener to kick off the show. You see that match on paper? Most people would be like shrugging their shoulders like, uh, really? These two guys are fighting each other? They had a hell of a fight. It was good. Two guys just beating the shit out of each other. We had interferences for Robert Stone. It looks like Von Wagner is going to be on his way back to TV and uh, try to get revenge on Braun Breaker. But Baron Corbin 
Uh, now in this new stint, NXT is about capitalizing on other people's mistakes and not t- uh, not taking any prisoners. He drops Braun Breaker with the end of days and gets the victory there. So I thought that was a good way to kick off the show. From there, we start with the storytelling and crowd participation part of this show. I got to give a big, big shout out to the Bakersfield crowd tonight. I didn't know Bakersfield was a hotbed for professional wrestling. I know that California, San Francisco, L.A., Southern California is a big hotbed for pro wrestling. But I didn't know Bakersfield would have a great crowd. And they were up for it all night. Um, And it really started here with the Trick Williams and Dominic Mysterio match for the NXT North American Championship. Um, We had two title changes on the show tonight. And this was the first one. Congratulations go out to Trick Williams on becoming your brand new NXT North American Champion. Uh, Fun match. Dragon Lee was a special guest referee. Uh, It wasn't really a great night to be a referee outside of the two marquee matches. Uh, There was a lot of interference and a lot of stuff with the referees tonight that I thought was kind of a miss if I'm going to be fair and um, honest here. Um, uh, Dragon Lee was a special guest referee. Um, he got knocked out earlier in the match. The second referee came in. Dominic knocked him down. You know kind of the formula now with these Dominic Mysterio matches. is just a lot of shenanigans. It's not been he's doing his job. He's a bad guy, you know. Um, Trick Williams won with a running pump knee strike, kind of a V-trigger, if you will, to Dominic Mysterio. And he is your new NXT North American champion. The entire presentation, the role that Trick Williams has been on on TV, especially these past couple of months since he's gone solo, uh, it's been a lot of fun. The new entrance song and theme is a vibe. Um, even Booker T's vibing with it. We're all vibing with it. The crowd's participating with it. And that's what you really want at the end of the day with a performer, especially a young rising performer like Trick Williams. Um it was a big moment for him, his first championship in WWE, not in the tag team variety, but as a singles competitor. Uh, so congratulations go out to Trick Williams on becoming the NXT North American champion. I kind of figured this was going to be the calling of when this title was going to get off of Dominic's hands. I didn't think he was going to be the champion forever, but it could have gone to a better guy. And I know that a lot of people are going to be upset over the fact that Mustafa Ali didn't get this opportunity. But if we're being honest here, that title would have more meaning and more substance to it with Trick than it would with Mustafa. So uh, it is what it is. Um, From there, we had the uh, Fatal 4-Way match for the NXT Tag Team Championships. It was the uh, family. How's the Gabagool? Uh, Tony D'Angelo Stax Lorenzo taking on... Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo, uh, we had the new tag team uh, called Out of the Mud with uh, Bronco Nima and Lucian Price, guys I've seen kind of rise up the ranks on the, uh, the Level Up show over the years. Now they're getting more TV time on the mainstay NXT shows, which is nice to see. And of course, the Kree Brothers. Uh, this match was put together on this past week's edition of NXT TV on USA Network. And I, you know... I wasn't that it wasn't that I wasn't looking forward to this match, but um, no, you see matches on paper. Some matches may think this could be uh, not necessarily a bathroom break, but you know a breather match. You know you have uh, the first two matches of the show had so much energy and vibe from the crowd. You would think the crowd would be sitting on their hands for this one, but it was like full speed Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> action in this uh, four way. Obviously, the referee was in a lose-lose uh, position. Uh, kind of got a little sloppy at times. Uh, just with trying to figure out what was going on all over the place. But uh, the family ended up retaining the tag team titles. Pretty solid match. Much better than I expected it to be. Uh, Tony D kind of injured his right knee in the early part of the match. So I hope he's okay. Uh, he was ignoring medical officials that actually headbutt the uh, Oni Lorcan. I think he's back now with NXC as a, a coach and a producer, which is nice to see. Um, <laughs> uh, Tony D'Angelo got back its ring. You know, for example, like I was saying earlier, Tony D'Angelo and Stax is another um, example of young talent that really benefited from this new uh, mindset and approach for NXT. 
And th- both of these guys did a fantastic job in the ranks. They got the vibe of the crowd. They're all with the Italian lingo. <laughs> as as a paisan, I, I appreciate uh, Gabagool being relevant in uh, 2023. But the family retained their tag team titles. Like I said earlier, um, much better match than I thought it was going to be. Uh, from there, we have the Heritage Cup Championship match with Noam Dar and Butch. Now, I've seen the some of the stuff on Twitter uh, re- reacting to this match. And uh, for whatever reason, um, the Heritage Cup matches on these premium live events, I think, are being a victim of match placement. And, you know, with a lot of these takeover NXT premium live events, uh, you're going to have a lot of barn burners. And, unfortunately, there's going to be matches on the show where people are going to be sitting on their hands. Um, I thought this match was a victim of match placement. I, for one, really like the Heritage Cup style rules because I was the NXT UK mark. So, of course, being somebody who covered NXT UK all those episodes when it first started and when they started implementing this uh, title and this concept of the Heritage Cup rules during the uh, pandemic area. I, I go back with NEC UK so far with this concept with when they first started in the BT Sports Studio where nobody was in the crowd and you would have no this is where really where Noah Dar really got rejuvenated with his career was with this concept and the Heritage Cup Championship. As my buddy Jonathan Hood would say all the time, Noah Dar is the, uh, one of the best heels in the business and nobody would know about it. He's fantastic in the ring. I think for me, the metaphor group, while I can appreciate something a little different on screen, it's taken a little while for myself to to connect with the group. Uh, I've always liked Noam Dar's heel work. It's not that he's a heel or anything like that. I just don't think the metaphor concept is working so far. And also, again, it's, I think it's match placement. Um, I like the action that we saw in the ring with Noam Dar and Butch. It's definitely going to be one of those matches that go under under the radar, but there was a lot of shenanigans on the outside. You had uh, Gallus attacking Tyler Bate. We had constant run-ins by uh, the Chicks, uh, Jakar Jackson and um, Last Legend. Um, both of them have been fantastic on the Martin Show, by the way. <laughs> I, I'm just stating the fact both of those Chicks would be great on the Martin Show. <laughs> by the way, Mar- the Martin Show was my favorite TV show growing up as a kid, so... Uh, I just wanted to say that. Um, but Noah Dar ended up retaining in the sixth round. Uh, he's still your NXT uh, Heritage Cup champion. And they announced that uh, due to the shenanigans that are going on on the outside, they were to have um, Tyler Bate and Butch uh, taking on Gallus on NXT this coming Tuesday, which should be a pretty cool match to uh, type down. Then from there, we had the um, announcement NXT deadline will be taking place on December 9th. It will be the final premium live event for NXT uh, of 2023 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, This is the show that features that Iron Survivor Challenge match that they debuted last year. Uh, Look, one thing I can say about NXT, if you're a person that has a short attention span and ADHD, not knocking people. I'm saying if you're that type of person that has a low attention span and you want fast paced wrestling like that, these type of survivor, uh, iron survivor matches are for you. And kind of the NXT brand in itself is for you because things go like this, 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 there's no dragging. I think almost everybody on their roster has a storyline. There's like, I don't know, 15 to 16 backstage segments. <laughs> On the two-hour show that we get every week on USA Network. Um, It's very fast-paced. And um, if you're that type of person, uh, I think that's another reason why you would enjoy the current version of what we're seeing from NXT. Um, Next, we had the NXT Championship match with uh, Carmel Hayes and Ilya Dragunov. Match number two. Uh, The first one took place at the Great American Bash. The story here was that can Carmelo Hayes prove himself and everybody, not only is he a fighting champion and worthy of calling himself him, can he really bring out the physicality 
there's so much with Carmel Hayes and knowing how great of a wrestler he is and how charismatic he is and how much finesse he showcases during these shows and matches and stuff like that. Uh, Carmel Hayes is definitely another rising success coming out of this NXT 2.0 brand. And, you know, you have Ilya Dragunov, again, another NXT UK guy that I... Um, Start, start, started to see his start. You know, everybody marks out for Ilya Dragunov with the Gunther matches, and obviously those matches are classics. But I remember uh, Dragunov when he first started off in NXT uh, UK, and, you know, he's had a meteoric rise. I was not surprised by anything that I saw in the match because I know these guys were going to deliver. And, um... It's definitely one of the best um, NXT title matches I've seen in a while. Um, I think today in wrestling, uh, I think the bar is set too low where we drop match of the year candidates every other week or every other premium live event or pay-per-view for regardless of the promotion it is. There's a lot of great wrestling out there. I, for one, as somebody who covers the industry and really covers it on a technical level of actually typing down these moves and uh, doing play-by-play result articles, um, it's not that I'm jaded, but I have a high bar when it comes to really pinpointing what's actually worthy of being the match of the year candidate. I, I don't I don't toss out that phrase, match of the year this, match of the year that, like it's Oprah giving shit out to the audience. You know, uh, I maybe that's just me. I have a higher bar uh, than other people. But again, that's not taking anything away from this match. Uh, this match was phenomenal. It, like I said, it's one of the best NXT title matches I've seen in a long time. Um, Ilya Dragunov is your new NXT champion, which opens a lot of questions. What's next for Carmelo Hayes? We saw him towards the end of the show apologizing to Trick Williams for not having a championship. This is going to be the night both of them, the Trick and Melo Gay, would walk out with championships. That's not the case. Uh, will, will that... Well, that moment of Carmelo losing turned to backfire to him because he's so driven off of being a champion. Um, you know, he heads into a different path now. Now, Ilya Dragunov's the champion. I'm very happy for Dragunov. He deserved this moment. I don't, that's another thing I don't say a lot of people deserve or earn things in professional wrestling because nobody's really entitled or, or uh, deserves things. You got to earn it and go after what you want. Uh, you're not owed anything in the world of professional wrestling. And Ilya Dragunov took it tonight. And he's one of the few exceptions that I would say, okay, that's somebody who actually deserves to be an NXT champion. If you guys have seen this show, just watch this match just for that uh, match for itself. It was phenomenal. Uh, then we had the main event, uh, Becky Lynch and... Tiffany Stratton, the Extreme Rules match for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, fantastic match. Uh, fantastic main event. I said it before many, many different times on this show that Tiffany Stratton is going to be the next big star in WWE uh, from the female side. She has it. She has everything of it you would want under the sun. Uh, hot. Sexy, um, instincts, the wrestling, the character, the charisma, um, the grit, the badassery. She brought it tonight. Literally, I, I, me saying that Tiffany Stratton is the real deal is like an understatement of a lifetime. She's fantastic and I enjoy transcribing her matches and she's barely even scratching the surface for somebody who's been wrestling for two years which is insane so uh shout out to Tiffany Stratton she's fantastic what's there to be said about Becky Lynch she is the best wrestler uh female wrestler in the world so uh, outside of Charlotte Flair she's definitely the best woman's wrestler in WWE uh, Becky retains with a manhandle slam through a pile of chairs. 
We had everything under the sun when it comes to these weapons. We had Barbie dolls in the ring, which I never saw that before. Usually you see the black bag. It's either thumbtacks or Legos. This time we have Barbie doll uh, figures, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> but both these ladies beat the um, ever-loving shit out of each other. And uh, it was a very, very good match uh, and a good way to close out this uh, premium live event. All in all, man, I give uh, No Mercy two thumbs up. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic premium live event for NXT. And I think a lot of people should give this brand a chance and stop looking at it under the prism of Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard. They produced the show for the initial change for a month and then gave it back to Shawn Michaels. It's not really what you think. It's not what Dave Meltzer says the NXT brand is. Hell, more times than not, their ratings are on the rise, too. <laughs> Watch the current brand of NXT and give it a chance. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, it even if you don't want to watch the TV show, you want to start off point of seeing what the current NXT looks like, watch this show tonight. And um, the entire staff for NXT deserve a lot of credit, so I want to give a big round of applause for that. And... Um, a fun show, a uh, fun time to uh, uh, transcribe a pay-per-view. This was a very special night for myself, too, on a professional end. This was the first pay-per-view I've got to cover since I got my job back. Um, the last pay-per-view I covered was an Impact Wrestling show in the at the end of February. Um, and it's just great uh, to be back in my job. And now I'm having the opportunity to cover all WWE premium live events going forward too alongside the uh, Raw Smackdown and NXT weekly which is cool and I'm just back on the grind and it's um it's fun so um this one a little longer than I wanted to but uh <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this review let me know what you guys liked or disliked from No Mercy open to seeing your comments and suggestions and stuff like that and um I will be back here tomorrow night as well as I will um, give you my brief recap of um, AEW Wrestle Dream. So please do me a favor, like this video, uh, subscribe to our channel. If you subscribe to our channel, not only you miss every uh, new edition of the Hoots Podcast, but other episodes, other bonus content we drop on the channel, make some guitar covers. Um, we have our latest episode, episode 380, pinned to the top of our page. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the hoots podcast and um yeah that's pretty much it uh i hope you guys enjoy your night and um all in all two thumbs up for nxt no mercy i enjoyed the event i love to get i love to get your guys thoughts let me know in the comment section down below we'll talk to you later peace